RuneScape is a game where there are many sources of items, from bossing to skilling to mini games, but nothing is more exciting than opening a treasure chest. From endgame chests everybody dreams of to forgotten chests that nobody knows, chests exist all throughout RuneScape. In this series, I aim to answer one simple question. Can you complete every raid in RuneScape with your only source of items being from chests? Our goal is Wilderness Slayer, so we can get the stats to equip our best raiding armor, Barrows. But we have a small problem. Currently, we look like this, which is not cutting it. Luckily, we're going to be hunting for our best in slot amulet that we will need for raiding, the Amulet of the Damned, and hopefully pick up many, many more upgrades along the way. The Amulet of the Damned is obtained from the Shades of Morton minigame, but as always, there's one major catch. There are many Shades chests, each one requiring a higher fire making level, and the Amulet of the Damned is only dropped from level 65 onwards. So join me on this journey of how a two hour grind on a main turned into over 150 hours with these restrictions. Shades requires a lot of logs. Luckily, our Camdozel grind got us almost 600 usable ones for now, which is a great head start. Our main goal for now is 52 fire making, as then we're going to move on to a method you've probably never seen before. A way to gain fire making experience without using logs. Shades are interesting, we can burn these Fryn remains with oak or normal logs and that can get us keys that we can then use to open the chests. But what's cool is the keys from these can actually give us willow logs, which we'd then use to do the next tier of shade at 35 fire making and then those can give us U logs and etc etc. So shades can theoretically sustain itself on logs. I am hoping that when we hit this army of the damned we are going to hit the 1 in 76 rune scimitar as well because a little bit of a weapon upgrade will go a long way before barrows. First level of the episode, 49 hit points, we can't grumble at that. Wonder what kind of levels we're gonna have by the end of this, cause the higher we can get before Wilderness Slayer, the better. Last time when we were here, we were getting like two or three kill trips, but because we got 43 prayer last episode, being able to flick these is awesome. Because burning shades gives additional prayer experience as well, maybe we can get Eagle Eye and Mystic Might. These shades are so janky, if you hit one, sometimes it just stops retali- look, auto retaliate doesn't work. Auto retaliate is on. If I turn it off and then on again, does it work? I have no idea. Either way, janky content, man. Why is everything to do with chests so freaking janky? And there's the first inventory completed. We've only got to do another nine of these. Luckily, the sponsor of today's video, Square Enix, will keep me entertained. They recently held the Tokyo Final Fantasy XIV Fan Festival 2024 event, where they confirmed that Final Fantasy XIV, commonly regarded as one of the best MMOs, is now getting even better. The Dawn Trail expansion is coming, introducing new jobs, new areas, and even more story content for you to explore. It was previously announced a new job had become coming to the game, Viper, a dual-wielding, DPS-focused job. But the fan festival announced a second new job, Pictomancer, which looks absolutely stunning. The Pictomancer wields a special brush that renders their imagination into reality, creating not only creatures and weapons, but also entire landscapes as well. If you're wanting to delve into the game, the best time to do it is now. Not only is the Dawn Trail expansion bringing in a new female race for you to try, Rothgar, it's also introducing new areas such as Solution 9. The free trial's also been upgraded and now includes a second expansion called Stormblood, introducing new jobs such as Samurai and Red Mage. So now is the perfect time to join the game and enjoy limitless playtime up to level 70 by using my link below. And in doing so, supporting my channel for absolutely free. Once again, thanks to Square Enix for sponsoring today's video. And there's the first strength level of the episode, 53 strength, perfect timing, last kill just as the minigame teleport comes off cooldown. Ooh, 700 total level with that strength level, we are definitely, definitely moving up in the world. And that's the last remains we need for now, I think. Now we've got these remains, we need to get some sacred oil so we can use it with the oak logs to create oak pyre logs. Then we can use these with the shades to burn them for keys, which then open the chests. This this is where our first issue comes in though. You can only do 13 of these at a time, and we don't have a bank there, so we'd be relying on the Shades of Morton minigame teleport, meaning we could only do 39 an hour. So I think it's time to try and unlock Berg to Rock, because that is the only bank that's close to that place. To unlock this bank, we need to start in aid of the Mayaki, 
which means we need 25 crafting and 25 agility for the prerequisite quest. Luckily, we're already level 23 in both, so it shouldn't take long. So let's go and see if this soft clay that we've got will get us 25 crafting. Okay, like last time, we are going to be making plant pots because this is our only way that we're ever going to be able to plant trees, I believe. Making the plant pots ourselves. What a weird thing to do. There's 24 at least. I wonder if we've got enough for 25. It's only 800 experience. And there we go. 25 crafting achieved. That was nice and easy. We've just got one skill left. This makes a big change from the norm. Now we need agility. So we've got to go back to that place. Ugh. Let's crack on. We just need two levels and we're almost 24. Ah yes, my favorite room, chests and a bubble. But we don't get any tears till the next one. You know, I thought coming back here with 70 thieving would have given me like more success. But I just... It just isn't working. And we're at 56 tiers and we've just hit level 24. So I think we just need one more chest and we have it. Oh, and like fear, it spawned right next to me and it was the chest. Okay, I think this is enough. 15 agility XP as well because we leveled up. So um, yeah, this has got to be enough. Let's just do all. Yes, there we go. 25 agility. First, we've got to do nature spirit. So let's make our way to the swamp. The longest way possible. We're going to have to do this quite a few times. The reason that we're allowed to do these three quests is because they're all prerequisites for Sins of the Father, which unlocks as the Hallowed Sepulchre chests. I'm an idiot. I'm a complete idiot. I forgot to make the freaking sickle. God damn it. What did I just see? Oh, I wish. Oh, we're going to have to do this walk a lot. And there's one quest down. 28 crafting, not bad at all. Roast me in the comments, that entire quest and I didn't even use the Shades of Morton teleport to get to the grotto once. What am I doing? One more quest to go? Okay, we're now in Berg de Rot, but we have a little bit of a problem. The bank is over here, and I'm not sure if we can fix it until we get through the part of the quest for the general store. And to do that, the shopkeeper's going to ask for either raw mackerel or raw snail meat. If he asks for mackerel, we have literally no way of obtaining this yet, so we will be locked out of this, and our grind is going to get exponentially longer. Come on, I believe this is the moment of truth. Please, no. Oh, this is terrible. What do I do? Is there no way to swap this? Like, if I log out right now, is there no way that he changes his mind? Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, he changed his mind. I did not know that worked. I can't see that on the wiki or anything. I, oh my God. If I finished that conversation, I would have been locked in. It's now snails. I can do it. Thank fuck. And it goes in the quest log at the end of the conversation. Oh my God. I am so, so, so stuck that worked. Just for the record, I'm going to see if we could have repaired the bank booth without having mackerel. We couldn't. You've got to do this first. And there we go. We have 10 snails in there. Oh, this feels so good. Oh, we've got the bank. We can get straight back onto this fire making grind. I'm not completing this quest yet. I want this rune simmy. First things first, we need a lot of sacred oil. Enough for 219 logs. Wait, we have a hammer now. Maybe we can go and just repair the temple for some AFK shade activity this time. To make sacred oil, you need olive oil, and the only way to get that is from this shop. Now, even though we can't use shops on this account, we can buy olive oil here because it's half of the key to actually unlock a shades chest, and it's impossible to open them without it. Oh yeah, doing it this way, we're actually going to get some crafting XP as well. That's lovely. Turns out our AFK fantasies come to an end early. We had some resources left over from the quest and you need timber beams and limestone bricks and swamp paste to actually build them resources up. I thought it was team resources. Unfortunately, it's individual. So our only way of getting sanctity is going to be killing the shades. And after a long, long grind, we've got enough sacred oil for all of these remains. We're currently level 21 fire making. Let's see what it gets us to. First things first, we've got to use all the sacred oil on the oak logs to turn them into oak pyre logs. And the downside to this is every single one has to be a manual click, as you can see. Oh yeah, actually making these gives some fire making XP as well. So there's our first fire making level of the grind. We get 16 experience per log. Well, actually, sometimes we get 10. Okay, I guess we get 26 experience per two logs. That's weird. The fun thing is, on mains, I think you can do this at level one fire making. So it is a way for you to get some quick fire making XP early. Because if you click fast look, you do get a lot of experience. 
As you can see, these give prayer and fire making XP, meaning that we might actually be able to unlock Eagle Eye in this grind, which would be incredible. The goal that we need from these 219 remains is 35 fire making, because that'll allow us to move up to the next load of shades, which require willow logs. And these steel keys will get us a lot of willow logs to actually use. I've only just realized how long burning this many is actually gonna take. Jesus Christ. And there's 44 prayer. We can now use Eagle Eye, which will be huge for Worldy Slayer. I'm excited. We have got a key on every log this inventory. Can we get one on the final one? Come on. That is beautiful. Key on every single shade. That is huge. And there we go. First milestone completed. 35 fire making. But we still need to get to 52, which is a thousand willow logs from here. I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to sustain the willow logs, but I guess we're going to find out. Willow logs straight up. Steel locks, these might actually be useful because I can get this coffin on the back and I believe this is how you upgrade it. Ooh, an emerald ring. We get another ring of dueling. I forgot these actually drop here. That is insane. We will try this clue soon. We can't get bark, so I'm not sure how useful this actually is. And that's a full inventory. We only got 15 willow logs, which is not good because that means that we've used more shades than willow logs obtained. So we're not going to have an infinite supply. Oh, wait, we got a mithril medalm. That's not even an upgrade. I got excited over nothing. If we talk to this guy here and get a broken coffin, we can actually give him these steel locks and then it makes us a steel coffin. Now this can store up to eight shade remains, which should speed up things quite a lot. Because not only can we get more shared remains from down here, we can also use more shared remains when we're cremating them and take more logs. That is a full inventory with no willow logs. That is not good. While we're here and we're low on prayer, let's show these bleached bones off. So you get these from the undead zealots, and if you use them on this altar, it actually fully restores your prayer points, which is awesome. Very helpful when I'm camping down here for a long time. Nice! We actually got the same amount of willow logs that time as keys. That is what we need. Holy crap, even in a single combat area, all these undead druids hit you at once. That is uh, <laughs> kind of scary, I'm not going to lie. Ooh, what is this? A tree wizard's journal. Okay, so opening up this journal gives us this rune scroll of swamp bark, which we can read and then we're going to be able to actually make it. But unfortunately, swamp bark requires split bark and to make that we need bark and fine cloth. We get the fine cloth from here, but bark is unobtainable to us. So while it's a useless item, it is pretty cool to get. And that is the last inventory of steel keys. And we got just over half back. So this will not be an infinite amount of willow logs. These shades are the higher level ones that can only be burnt with willow logs and above. Oak logs cannot burn real remains. But willow logs can burn these and everything below it. So willow logs can burn Fryn remains. We are actually going to be burning more Fryn remains because if we burn the real remains now, we're kind of screwed because these only drop U logs and we are nowhere near actually being able to use U logs. We're still 35 fire making. So we have to keep burning these to get as many willow logs as possible because it's our only way to keep this up. So we are locked into Fryn remains for a long, long time. And let's just hope we can keep the upkeep up. And there is 60 strength, which is pretty huge. 60 in a melee stat. I kid you not, I have been doing shades since this said eight days, three hours or so. We're 19 hours deep and we've still got a long, long way to go. So to save you all the annoyance of watching this, let's skip through with a brief recap. So we killed fringe shade after fringe shade, law shade after law shade, got some lovely defense levels, Obtained two bonds from our favorite viewer, Big Boy Les, and 25 hours later. <laughs> yep, 25. We have 739 remains and 505 sacred oils. We collected a lot more than we need because we're going to use these on the willow logs, and then hopefully we get more willow logs back and repeat, and we get to use all this sacred oil. That would be amazing. Willow logs give quite good experience. 100 fire making 46 prayer. We should get quite a lot of levels, but that means 700 remains is only 70,000 experience, which is not quite 52. And there is 45 prayer. We can now use Mystic Might. This is probably the last important prayer for a long, long time. Redemption might be useful in some cases, but these are the offensive prayers that we need for now. 
not as many keys as last time. I'm really hoping we get willow logs in this, but before we open them, we should probably go and try this clue. Oh my god, is this our first medium clue casket? I think it is. We're looking for Adi armor or anything else cool. Uh, mm. Come on. Yes, willow logs. We need loads. Just give me, just give me willow logs every time. Now that is what I'm talking about. 24 keys, 46 willow logs. That is exactly what we need. That is profit right there, baby. There's 45 and we're still slightly upkeeping willow logs. We've got about 56 this time. Second medium clue casket. We're looking for Adi armor. No, we did get some chaps though, which is pretty good. We almost hit 50 fire making, so just two and a little bit levels to go. We also got 49 prayer, so we can now use redemption, which could come in handy. Oh, I forgot we were out of food, so we've got to make some more. la di da di da cooking with my friend Remy. That'll do. Back to this hell. 60 defense. We can now wear dragon equipment, which we can get from some chests, and only 10 levels till barrows. And there is 50 fire making. Normally we'd be able to do Winter Todd, but we can't. But we're finally in the last two level stretch. Ooh, we took a little break from our regularly scheduled programming to actually manage to get a medium casket. Come on. Why? Why can't we get anything good all right this is getting daft now where the hell are these willow logs i think i'm like 60 to 70 chests dry 50 prayer a level i did not expect to get on this grind well we're pretty much out of sacred oil again and almost remains and we're still not 52 we've got 3200 experience to go but luckily we do have enough logs to get us there so we're just gonna do standard fire making on these logs now to get the level that we need Oh my god, and there it is, 52 fire making. Members can now replace Dorgish and Light Orbs. This is what we've been working towards. If anyone's looking for any fun and alternative ways to get 50 fire making for Winter Todd, don't do this. Please, please don't do this. I started this at 8 days, 2 hours. It's took 2 days and 17 hours just to get from 21 to 52. Do not curse yourself to this, please for your own sake. And now we're onto the secret source of this episode, the fire making method that doesn't use logs. Our goal is still the Amulet of the Damned and the various other upgrades from the silver chests at Morton. But to get there, our remaining 13 levels are gonna be done via light bulbs in Dorgash Khan. There are 103 lamps down in the city and at any given time, 10 of these are broken. We can simply use a light orb on any of these broken lamps to fix them, granting us 1000 fire making experience. Yep, 1,000. This is one of the highest experience drops in the entire game. To obtain light orbs, we have two options. The chest we looted previously for magic runes or the rich chests at level 78 thieving. To hit level 65 fire making, we need 311 light orbs. And at a drop rate of 1 in 20, this means we need to loot over 6,000 chests. Oh boy, here we go again. I do love this chest, but over 6,000 world hops is gonna take a while. On the bright side, the amount of runes that we're gonna get is gonna be amazing for Wilderness Slayer, so we cannot complain at all. I've just looked at all the chests we did before. Now, not all of these are the magic chests, which are this one, but we did drop 69 light orbs, which would have been a fifth of the way to our goal. That sucks. We're not gonna be dropping those this time. <laughs> And there's number one, 310 to go. It is nice that after getting like a thousand fire making XP an hour at Shades, that one item is 1000 fire making XP. This should be good when it gets to using them. We have got an empty light orb and a cave goblin wire here, which is technically a light bulb, but because it needs 87 crafting to make, that is far, far out of our reach. So we are going to drop those. Okay, we've got a full inventory now, so we're gonna go and try and find a lamp. We have a light orb and I want to use it on a broken lamp because I've never done this before and I wanna make sure we can actually do it before I commit to the grind. As you can see, these lamps are fully working, so we need to find some that don't have the glow around them. So let's just run around for a little bit. Aha, there's one. So that is a broken lamp. It looks a little bit shriveled up and there's no glow around it. So let's get into that house real quick. Oh, in fact, there's one here as well. These aren't too bad to find. So apparently we just use the light orb on this and then boom, 1000 fire making experience. That is absolutely crazy. We're still banking all the talismans that we get because I believe we're going to use these for tiaras for runecraft and XP in the future. 
Still not set on that, but it's better to have them in the bank than not have them in the bank. We've almost got a full level already, and I forgot how little runes you actually get for the simple fact that each chest is 200 thieving experience. So you probably don't get one type of rune for like 4,000 XP. 72 thieving? Which funnily enough does unlock me a chest. Oh, five light orbs in one inventory. That's 5,000 experience. Gimme. The funny number thieving level. In fact, do you know what is wild? This entire grind is going to get us over 1.4 million thieving experience. And I think we only get around 40,000 XP an hour for this. So it is, again, a long grind. But 1.4 million experience is crazy. We're going to end up with like over 80 thieving from this. Just for 311 light orbs. The one big problem with this content, man. Kind of sucks. I've just got to sit around for a little bit. Okay, we've been doing this for many hours. More than what this says because of the world hopping. And we're almost 76 thieving with three chests off. But we're not even halfway to the light orbs that we need. We do have one secret weapon though. But that requires getting 78 thieving. Now we can loot rich chests in Dorgish Khan. As you can see, we got a lot of runes, especially these elemental ones are going to be really, really useful to us. If we deposit everything, the rune stack is looking insane right now. We've got a thousand of everything at least apart from bloods, which that chest doesn't drop. We're also two thirds of our way to the light orb goal. We need 311, so 104 more. To get these, we have a little bit of a secret plan. When we got 78 thieving, we actually unlocked these Dorgish Khan rich chests, whose drop table looks like this. As you can tell, this is a lot, lot better. So let's crack on with it. And there's a room that has two just next to the bank. So now we can actually open these and 650 experience per. That is incredible. That is like three and a little bit times more efficient than the other chests. We will be keeping all these gems because when we eventually unlock our crafting molds, we're going to be able to make some really interesting things like burning amulets, for example. We'll also keep all the iron bars because we never know when they're going to come in handy either. And unfortunately, we can't get any runes from here. That's the only downside to this. The runes that we got are the runes that we're going to be using for Wilderness Slayer when we get there. <sighs> and the curse has struck once again. What the hell is this animation? I love it and I want it. Look at this. It's just telling him off. I've got no idea what's going on, but I want this. <laughs> And surprisingly fast, there's 80 thieving, a first level 80 on the account. The XP here being tripled means we're getting like 130,000 XP an hour. So this level's only going to take like an hour and a half. Well, I've just made the mistake of looking at the loot tab, but look how many chests we've opened. Jesus Christ. But more importantly, we would have been done with light orbs if we just kept them in the other episode, goddammit. And I believe these are the final light orbs. And there's 311. I think we calculated it right. Let's go find out. I've only just now realized how annoying this is going to be with no stamina or energy pots. Ah, this is going to take a while, isn't it? Getting them thousand experience drops is so satisfying. Like, I don't think there's many skills in the game that actually have a thousand XP drop. It's insane. Okay, so we've got another broken lamp here and I want to test something. I wonder if these are per world or per account. So if I hop worlds, is this lamp still going to be broken? Okay, they're definitely per account then, which means we can't hack the system by just hopping around the most populated area of them. And there's the first fire making level from these and it only took 12 orbs. What is this building? Was it intended for something? I have absolutely no idea. It's just empty. Ooh, two in one room. We're eating today, boys. Sometimes it's really hard to tell if a lamp's broken. But what I'm going to do is every time one is, I'm going to mark it like this. When I use a bulb on it, it will get unmarked. But at least that way, if one becomes broken again, I'll be able to see it pretty much instantly, even through walls. And there's the first full inventory completed. It took about 35 minutes. So all in all, this grind should only take about five hours. That is really good. Much, much better than shades. Ooh, marking them actually works. Look, this is one that I fixed earlier and now it's bust again. It's yellow. This is perfect. This should make it so much easier to identify them. 55 fire making, 10 levels to go. Turns out there's an entire underground area that I have not looked at and there's been two broken lamps here like the entire time. I feel a little bit silly, but at least I know this is here now. Oh my God, and I've not been in this building either. 
This has been so much faster since I found those four that were just hidden. Instead of having six that are randomly changing, I've now got all 10, so I'm finding them way more often, including a load of double rooms. The XP an hour has gone up from like 45 to 65,000 just from that. And there's a 6,000 experience drop. Yep, you saw that right. Every 100th orb you put into this, you get 6,000 experience as you get an additional 5,000 XP for every 100 orbs that you put into the city. And here's an example of why marking them is so good. Yoink. Three. Straight up. Don't even have to think about it. Ooh, and there's level 65 more to go. I really do wish people came down here more or there was a reason to, because there's been a lot of work put into this city. Look, the goblin childs have balls and they actually kick them to each other. It's absolutely insane. Look. Like, how cool is that? This little world building in such an unknown area is so awesome. In fact, here's something fun. Comment down below your favorite area in the game, whether it's aesthetically or just because of cool interactions like that. Here we are six hours later and with this final bulb, that marks 65 fire making. We can now burn you pyre logs. And with that, there's only one thing left to do. Return back to where it all started. Return back to when we had 21 fire making. Return back to the Shades of Morton. But this time we're stronger. We have the level to open the silver chest containing not only our beloved Amulet of the Damned, but many other upgrades, including a new scimitar. Once again, I am calmly asking for willow logs, pretty please. And here we are, a big moment, burning our first real shades on the account. Now, each of these keys has a different drop rate for you logs. One has a 1 in 22, one has a 1 in 23, and one has a 1 in 25. Let's see if we can hit any. <gasps> Wait, Staff of... I think we need this. We've been using a Staff of Air, right? So we've just got a load of air runes sat in the bank. This is actually huge, and it's pretty rare. Holy crap. Oh my... And a, oh, and an upgrade. Mithril Full Elm. It's only plus one in defense, but everything helps. Oh my god, I fucked up. We're doing everything right, but when I got those 700 fringe shades before, I should have been collecting the assing shades for these black keys. Black keys actually drop willow logs and yew logs. I didn't even know. I really should have done my research earlier, but I've wasted so much time, I feel like. Because they drop black keys and steel keys as well and not bronze, we'd get extra willow logs from the steel keys. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we will go infinite off of these. That is insane. I'm an idiot. I am an absolute idiot. And we got no U logs. But we did get 19 Willow logs back. So I guess we just keep sending it until we hit some. Oh, and we managed to complete a fourth medium clue. You know what? Green de eyed body. We've got the chaps already, but that body is awesome. We are so close to being able to wear it, and it's a huge upgrade. Oh. <gasps> and there is our first U logs. We actually got some. That is incredible. We've actually got a chance. Every single one of these logs is a chance at an Ami of the Damned or a Rune Scimitar. Or something else surprising. I am so, so happy. <laughs> what a name. Okay, we have one chance. I actually have one Assing remaining. I made a mistake. I used all the black keys, so I actually can't go and kill these anymore. So I need this to give me any key. And if it does, I can go and collect some Assing remains for those other U-logs. Please? Are you kidding me? Back to fringe shades. And here is the last big bad shade. We're actually getting silver keys now. This is amazing. We are getting some black as well, which again can give us more willow and yule logs. So this is great. These could give us so many upgrades. I cannot wait to go open these. Let's go get some food. And here we are. We're going to open our first silver keys with these chests right here. We can get an amulet of the damned, which is one of our main goals, and the rune scimitar, of course, which is a 1 in 76 drop rate. But we can also get adamant armor, rune chain bodies, rune med elms. We have so many upgrade potential here. Key number one. And there's the best helm. Oh my god. That is insane. Get that straight on. Look at us. We look beastly. Oh, and there it is. That is our best in slot amulet. It's got the exact same stats as the amulet of glory, but on top of that, it gives additional effects to all of the Barrows sets. We'll get into those when we actually get the sets though, but just know this amulet is insane. Last key, an adamant battle axe. That's a shame, but we cannot grumble with what we've got. We're gonna have to train strength again for a little while because on the other styles, we're only hitting 11s now instead of 12 because this does give more strength bonus than the damned. 
but I am noticing the attack bonus, so we are not swapping back. Something else though, Mithril Chain Body is normally worse than a Black Plate Body on most things, but it's got a plus 12 crush bonus and all shades attack with crush, so theoretically this should make me take a lot less damage. Okay, we're gonna put the black locks on and now this should be able to hold 12 I believe. Is that the final elemental staff that I need? If it is, that is awesome. We can still get a lot of upgrades from these, so let's keep up. In fact, that Mithril Plate Body is a really good upgrade, but for Shades, it's not because the Crush Bonus is less. And the last key, an Adamant Square Shield. At least it's an upgrade. Still no Rune Scimitar though. Fifth step for the fifth clue. Can we get some boots? These ham ones are looking ugly. Unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. Oh, Adamant Plate Body though. That's a huge upgrade. Yoink. I'll tell you one thing, I didn't think I'd be getting 52 prayer and smite unlocked on this grind. Jesus Christ. I really didn't think I'd get another fire making level either. There is 66. Oh boy. Oh, and there's the blood bark notes. Once again, we can't actually use these unfortunately, but I may as well learn how to do it because why not? We got it anyway. Six hours later, eight more silver keys. A shield upgrade, that's not bad at all. A legs upgrade as well, now we're looking baller. Another amulet of the damned, which is gonna be really important because you can actually lose them really, really easily. Unfortunately, we've got almost every upgrade from here now and we've still not got the rune sim. I kinda don't wanna let sunk cost fallacy get to my head seeing as we've been spending probably over seven days on this at this point if you include the world up limits. And honestly, a rune scimitar is not that big of a deal when we'll get Barrow's equipment soon. So I'm going to give it one more inventory of keys. And if we don't hit it, we're just going to rock the Addy Sim for a while. It's not exactly a huge difference. And we've already got five upgrades from here. I'm just doing a quick clue and what the hell is this imp? Oh. Oh, I wondered why I couldn't click it. I had never saw one of these ever like come into existence. I've seen them in wheat fields, obviously. I've never actually seen them be created. I didn't know there was like an unclickable imp that walked the path out. That's sick. You learn new things every day on this game, even after playing it for like 20 years. And on one of our last batch of willow logs, we've managed to get a sixth medium clue. <sighs> Ooh, I mean, we've not got a blessing yet. That is actually good because we have nothing in that slot. And this is officially it. It's the last stand. We're completely out of willow logs and we've got 35 U logs to get some silver keys and get this rune scimitar drop. Thousands of shades, thousands of chests, and 150 hours in the making. It all comes down to this. Wish me luck. Okay, this is it. We have 12 keys from those 35 logs. Not many. Can we hit the scimitar? The last brown key, no luck. The red ones have got to do this, please. Four left. Three. Two. One. And the final key is a battle staff. Unfortunately, the chests have beaten us today. 150 hours, but who is the real winner? I think it's us. We've got the plate body upgrade, the plate skirt upgrade, the kite shield, the rune med elm, and most importantly, the best in slot amulet. I think we're ready for some wilderness slayer.